The Rockers, Savoldi and Perez out against the Sheep Herders, Williams and Miller. And it is Butch Miller starting for his tandem. Circling now with Al Perez. Perez shoots Miller off. Butch catches him with that shoulder block. The tag goes to Luke Williams. And George, we're talking about good tag teams. We're seeing two of them here in this match, a main event any place in the world. You got it. Lou Williams comes up with a reverse chin lock on Al Perez, applying the pressure now, cranking down. Comes up with the headlock now. As Perez shoots him off, Luke catches him with that shoulder block on the move. Over the top goes the Sheepherder. And waiting on him is Perez with the drop kick. Andre take down. Headlock throws in the hip and goes to the canvas. We're seeing a lot of speed, but of course, we're also seeing George speed against speed because the Sheepers, although they prefer the back alley brawling style, they ha do have the speed to move with the Rockers if need be. They take off quite frequently together. They're real fast. Good move by Savoldi as he comes over the top. Luke Williams caught unaware, and it's Joe Savoldi. But. Butch Miller catches a tackle on the outside, moves in, and he's in control. And I believe it's got a match with the seesaw in the back of the George. Right. One count and Miller right out. Both teams are going to go well out to win. You know, because... Yes, sir. Well, they have, these two have feuded before, and it won't be the first time that, that a little well, for different. You. For years, the Sheep Herders have been uh, rated consistently in the top five, one of the top teams in the world, whereas the Rockers are relatively new to the sport. David. Well, this is true. This is true. And, you know, of course, you're mentioning being constantly rated or consistently rated in the top five. And as Jonathan Boy will clearly tell you, champions in 37 different countries, which in itself must be some kind of a record. The old Kangaroos used to have a record similar to that. Yes, I, that's right. And they were a great tag team as well. We're, there's a good shot of Butch Miller. And I'm not really sure that the Sheepers always play with 52 cards in their deck. Sometimes when you see an expression like that on Butch's face, you wonder. I would have to agree with that. Miller takes the tag. Williams steps out, and it's Savoldi in trouble now. Is Oh, hooks him, drops him. They have the pin here. No. A uh, two count. Miller using the legs to crack Savoldi alongside the head. Look at there. Joe blocks it and sends Butch crashing into that turnbuckle. Joe's showing some good form. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I was just about to mention you, George, that we have seen no clear-cut advantage here yet. It's been back and forth with both teams taking the advantage. Good shoulder block by Joe Savoli, and he's caught with a knee in the small of the back by Luke Williams on the outside. And of course, uh, Jonathan Boyd must be as happy as he can be outside that ring at this point. Quite a contrast in Jonathan Boyd and the Angel. If I've got to have a distraction one or the other, I think I'd take the Angel. You'd rather go with the Angel than Jonathan Boyd. <laughs> Luke Williams taking over and in control now. With Savoli being hammered around the small of the back. Luke uh, makes the tag. Partner Butch Miller moves in goes with a shot to the midsection himself. And Joe needs to make that corner, George. Needs to get the tag in. Perez, yes. At least he's getting closer here. Sometimes a few inches can be like a mile. A butch is going to keep him away, though. Again, good strategy of a good team. You draw that, that imaginary line across the center of that ring and try and keep your opponents on your side of that line. Joe Savoldi with a kick. Down goes Butch Miller, but he makes the tag. Is Savoldi going to make it? No. We're talking about inches being like miles. There's a good example right there, George. This Luke is sadistic. I think of the two. He's more sadistic than Butch. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think he enjoys that pain. Savoli needs to make that tag, he needs to make it bad, but Luke Williams is not going to allow it. Whoa, you he can hear that boot crack all the way up here. And now, Savoli again trying to crawl, look here. Close, so close, but Butch stops it. 
frustration and disappointment. How, certainly how would Perez right. feel on the outside? Oh, he's got to be so frustrated, George, at this point. You know, wanting to go in there, realizing that he can't without uh, drawing the referee. And right now, he needs to be in there. Needs that tag. He's in bad. Almost a three count on that one. Close, so very close. And that's got to be frustrating for Miller and Williams. Luke Williams now shoots Savoli in and goes to the elbow. Savoli with an elbow of his own on the return trip. Williams down, Savoli down. Savoli going for the corner. Luke trying to get him. A tag is made and here comes Al Perez. Perez takes over and goes to Fifth City. Williamson crashing into that corner, cuts the elbow on the way out. And Perez in the driver's seat. Drop kick, down goes Williams. Let's see if he'll go for the pin. Knee drop, he may have him here, George. A two count. Close, but almost only counts in horseshoes. Abdominal stretch here for Perez. He may have it again. He may have uh, it again. Savoldi. Savoldi keeping him out. It's a good move. Yeah. Yes. The referee has his hands full. And watch now. Look here. As long as Perez has had that stretch, he may have gotten a submission, but the referee is busy with Savoldi. And now he's got the sleeper. He's got it on Butch Miller. Miller, the illegal man in. Let's see what's going to happen here. A knee by Luke Williams in the small of the back. May have turned the tide of battle once again, but there's Savoldi in. And at this point, the referee's calling a stop, but I was about to say, I'm not sure who the legal man is at this point myself. It was Luke and, uh, and Perez, I believe. He's lost control, I believe you're right. Perez and Luke Williams should be the legal man in that ring. The referee, Tom Fornini, has lost control and wisely calls a halt. I'm sure he'll call this a no contest or a double disqualification. Look here, Butch Miller coming into the ring with a chair. And Perez trying to. What's going on here? They've got Perez hooked on that rope, but how? I can't tell from here. Perez handcuffed or tied to that ring rope. He's somewhere. handcuffed. He's handcuffed to the ring rope. This We're is what they did to the invader. The pile driver with an assist onto that chair, onto that steel folding chair. And watch here, Williams. Perez trying to fight him off. He's handcuffed to that rope. And here comes the invaders. Here comes the invaders. Joe Savoldi out cold in the center of the ring. Perez handcuffed to the rope. And look there, Luke Williams has been lacerated. So the debt hasn't gone completely unpaid, but the match called a no contest, but I have to say the Rockers got the worst end of this one. We'll have to take a break. Let's don't go away just yet. Let's see what happens to Joe Savoldi. Perez is wanting off those ropes. He's frustrated. He wants the key. He's looking for a key, and I, I obviously with who? Jonathan Boyd. Jonathan Boyd. That's where the handcuffs came from. And Savoldi down, and obviously in a bit of trouble here. He's not coming around any too quickly. And uh, Billy Sullivan, our other referee, bringing a stretcher to the ring. So obviously they will be taking Joe Savoldi out of that ring on a stretcher. But the neck obviously hurt here, George, dropping him full weight, driving him into that chair with that pile driver with the assist from Luke on the top. We got Perez off the ropes. Finally, uh, yes, Al is off. The handcuffs uh, have been taken off. He has been freed. There's no telling what would have happened if, uh, if the, the invaders invader, didn't come You're out. right, exactly. If the invaders had not come out, uh, Williams and Miller might have had their way with Perez because he was certainly in no shape to put up too much of a battle being handcuffed to that rope. But Joe Savoldi is in trouble. We're going to try and get word from the dressing room as soon as possible. The exact condition of Joe Savoldi is how badly he may be hurt, but I'm afraid the neck 
is going to be the big problem. There's, yes, there's his father down at ringside. George had mentioned former World Junior Weight Champion, Angelo Savoli, and he is now at ringside. And certainly you can see the concern on his face for his son, Joe. Watch his neck. Yes, you can read his lips too. Yes, <laughs> watch his neck. And uh, certainly that's obviously got to be the problem, the problem with the neck. And you can see the concern on the face of Angelo Savoli as he watched his son being loaded on that stretcher to move him out of that ring. And to stand by and watch that happen to your son has got to be a problem too, George. For a man like a, an old war horse like Angelo, who certainly probably want to get in there and throw a few punches himself. Joe Savoli being taken from the ring. We'll be checking to see his condition and let you know as quickly as possible. We're gonna have to take a break. We'll be right back with more action. If you want to see more classic wrestling, from the world-famous Angelo Savoldi Wrestling Library, the largest privately owned library of classic wrestling in the world, head on over to the Ultimate Classic Wrestling Network, available now on all major streaming platforms. <laughs> 